Hello, seniors. It's been a while and I'm glad to see you all again. Another journey is yet to overcome. So let's step ahead in learning another exciting area of science as a subject, the physical science. It is the science concerned with the study of inanimate natural objects including physics, chemistry, astronomy, and related subjects. That definition is taken from Oxford Dictionary. Let us learn physical science while having fun. Among the proposed explanations on how the universe began, the Big Bang Theory is the one currently accepted theoretically. It describes that the universe started with a singularity defined simply as a point where all matter, time, space, laws of the universe, and reality itself are condensed, ultimately inflating, not exploding, since approximately 14 billion years ago until now, according to NASA or National Aeronautics and Space Administration. My dear students, our lesson today is stellar nucleosynthesis. Before the planet we live in right now came to existence as all the other planets and solar systems and galaxies, the earliest elements were formed first. Let us explore why the elements needed to exist first. All matter that makes up most of the universe, including us, are made up of elements. These elements are what we study about in the periodic tables such as hydrogen, oxygen, and gold. Now, we need to understand the foundations and formations of elements. This lesson primarily focuses on the formation of the heavier elements. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain stellar nucleosynthesis, describe the different stages of life cycle of stars, and cite the different heavy elements formed in each stages of star cycle. Elements heavier than beryllium are formed through stellar nucleosynthesis. Stellar nucleosynthesis is the process by which elements are formed within stars. The abundances of these elements change as the stars evolve. The star formation theory proposes that stars form due to the collapse of the dense regions of a molecular cloud. As the cloud collapses, the fragments contract to form a stellar core called protostar. Due to the strong gravitational force, the protostar contracts and its temperature increases. When the core temperature reaches about 10 million Kelvin, nuclear reactions begin. The reactions release positrons and neutrinos which increase pressure and stop the contraction. When the contraction stops, the gravitational equilibrium is rich, and the protostar has become a main-sequence star. In the core of a main-sequence star, hydrogen is fused into helium via the proton-proton chain. When most of the hydrogen in the core is fused into helium, fusion stops, and the pressure in the core decreases. Gravity squeezes the star to a point that helium and hydrogen burning occur. Helium is converted to carbon in the core while hydrogen is converted to helium in the shell surrounding the core. The stars become a red giant. When the majority of the helium in the core has been converted to carbon, then the rate of fusion decreases. Gravity again squeezes the star. In a low-mass star with mass less than twice the sun's mass, there is not enough mass for a carbon fusion to occur. The star's fuel is depleted and over time, the outer material of the star is blown off into space. The only thing that remains is the hot and inert carbon core, and the star becomes a white dwarf. However, the fate of a massive star is different. A massive star has enough mass such that temperature and pressure increase to a point where carbon fusion can occur. 
The star goes through a series of stages where heavier elements are fused in the core and in the shells around the core. The element oxygen is formed from carbon fusion, neon from oxygen fusion, magnesium from neon fusion, silicon from magnesium fusion, and iron from silicon fusion. The star becomes a multiple shell red supergiant. The fusion of elements continues until iron is formed by silicon fusion. Elements lighter than iron can be fused because when two of these elements combine, they produce a nucleus with a mass lower than the sum of their masses. The missing mass is released as energy. Therefore, the fusion of elements lighter than iron releases energy. However, this does not happen to iron nuclei. Rather than releasing energy, the fusion of two iron nuclei requires an input of energy. Therefore, elements lighter than and including iron can be produced in a massive star, but no elements heavier than iron are produced. When the core can no longer produce energy to resist gravity, the star is doomed. Gravity squeezes the core until the star explodes and releases a large amount of energy. The star explosion is called a supernova. The discovery of the interstellar medium of gas and dust during the early part of the 20th century provided a crucial piece of evidence to support the star formation theory. Other pieces of evidence come from the study of different stages of formation happening in different areas in space and piecing them together to form a clearer picture. Energy in the form of infrared radiation or IR is detected from different stages of star formation. For instance, astronomers measure the IR release by a protostar and compare it to the IR from a nearby area with zero extinction. Extinction in astronomy means the absorption and scattering of electromagnetic radiation by gases and dust particles between an emitting astronomical object and an observer. The IR measurements are then used to approximate the energy, temperature, and pressure in the protostar. Stellar nucleosynthesis is the process by which elements are formed in the cores and shells of the stars through nuclear fusion reactions. Nuclear fusion is a type of reaction that fuses lighter elements to form heavier ones. It requires very high temperatures and pressures. It is the reaction that fuels the stars since stars have very high temperatures and pressures in their cores. Hydrogen is the lightest element and the most abundant in space. Thus, the formation of heavier elements starts with hydrogen. Hydrogen burning is the stellar process that produces energy in the stars. There are two dominant hydrogen burning processes, the proton-proton chain and carbon-nitrogen-oxygen or CNO cycle. The proton-proton chain is a series of thermonuclear reactions in the stars. It is the main source of energy radiated by the sun and other stars. It happens due to the large kinetic energies of the protons. If the kinetic energies of the protons are high enough to overcome their electrostatic repulsion, then proton-proton chain proceeds. The sequence proceeds as follows. Step 1. The chain starts when two protons fuse. When the fused proton breaks, one proton is transmuted into a neutron. Step 2. The proton and neutron then pairs, forming an isotope of hydrogen called deuterium. Step 3. Another proton collides with a deuterium forming a helium-3 nucleus in a gamma ray. Step 4. Finally, two helium-3 nuclei collide. 
and the helium-4 is created with the release of two protons. For more massive and hotter stars, the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen or CNO cycle is the more favorable route in converting hydrogen to helium. The CNO cycle proceeds as follows. Step 1. Carbon-12 captures a proton and gives off a gamma ray, producing an unstable nitrogen-13. Step 2. Nitrogen-13 undergoes beta decay to form carbon-13. Step 3. Carbon-13 captures a proton and releases a gamma ray to become nitrogen-14. Step 4. Nitrogen-14 then captures another proton and releases a gamma ray to produce oxygen-15. Step 5. Oxygen-15 undergoes beta decay and becomes nitrogen-15. Step 6. Finally, nitrogen-15 captures a proton and gives off helium, which is an alpha particle, ending the cycle and returning to carbon-12. Nucleosynthesis is the process by which new nuclei are formed from pre-existing or seed nuclei. Previously, you have learned about the types of nucleosynthesis. The Big Bang nucleosynthesis produces hydrogen and helium, whereas the stellar nucleosynthesis produces elements up to iron in the core of the stars. If the stellar nucleosynthesis produces only elements up to iron, then what type of nucleosynthesis produces the elements heavier than iron? The fusion reactions cannot produce nuclei higher than iron-56 because fusion reaction becomes unfavorable. This is because the nuclear binding energy per nucleon, the energy that holds the nucleus intact, decreases after iron-56. Therefore, different pathways are needed for the synthesis of heavier nuclei. Synthesis of heavier nuclei happens via neutron or proton capture processes. In neutron capture, a neutron is added to a seed nucleus. The addition of neutron produces a heavier isotope of the element. Its general formula is shown in the slide. For example, Iron-56 captures 3 neutrons to produce iron-59. Its formula is also shown. The generated isotope, when unstable, undergoes beta decay. This decay results in an increase in the number of protons of the nucleus by 1. Hence, a heavier nucleus is formed. Beta decay results in the formation of a new element. For example, the unstable iron-59 undergoes beta decay to produce cobalt-59. And its formula is also shown in the screen. Again, beta decay results in the formation of a new element by increasing the number of protons of the nucleus by 1. Slow neutron capture or S process happens when there is a small number of neutrons. It is termed slow because the rate of neutron capture is slow compared to the rate of beta decay. Therefore, if a beta decay occurs, it almost always occurs before another neutron can be captured. Rapid neutron capture or R process, on the other hand, happens when there is a large number of neutrons. It is termed rapid because the rate of neutron capture is fast that, that an unstable nucleus may still be combined with another neutron just before it undergoes beta decay. The R process is associated with a supernova. The temperature after a supernova is tremendously high that the neutrons are moving very fast. Because of their speed, 
they can immediately combine with the already heavy isotopes. This kind of nucleosynthesis is also called supernova nucleosynthesis. Proton capture or P process is the addition of a proton in the nucleus. It happens after a supernova when there is a tremendous amount of energy available. It is because the addition of a proton to the nucleus is not favorable because of columbic repulsion, which is the repulsive force between particles with the same charge. Proton capture produces a heavier nucleus that is different from the seed nucleus. To sum up, let's have the following concepts. Stellar nucleosynthesis is the process by which elements are formed within stars. The star formation theory proposes that stars form due to the collapse of the dense regions of a molecular cloud. A protostar is a stellar core formed when the fragments of a collapsed molecular cloud contract. A main sequence star is formed when gravitational equilibrium is reached during the hydrogen fusion in a protostar. A red giant is a star that has used up its hydrogen supply in the core and switched into the thermonuclear fusion of hydrogen in the shell surrounding the core. A massive star becomes a multiple-shell red giant when the elements oxygen, neon, magnesium, silicon, and iron are formed in its core together with carbon, helium, and hydrogen. A supernova is a star that blows apart and releases a large amount of energy. Evidence of star formation comes from studying IR, emissions from the different stages of star evolution. Hydrogen burning is the stellar process that produces energy in the stars. The proton-proton chain is a sequence of thermonuclear reactions in the stars and it is the main source of energy radiated by the sun and other stars. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, or the CNO cycle is a catalytic cycle of gamma emission and beta decay that converts hydrogen into helium. That's the end of our lesson today. It's been my pleasure teaching you one of the amazing topics of physical science and I really hope you've learned something from this video lesson. Thank you and may God bless us all. Let's meet again in our next video.